good morning. Merry Christmas. Our centering thought for, for today is from Ellie Weissel. The opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. The opposite of art is not ugliness, it's indifference. The opposite of faith is not heresy, it's indifference. And the opposite of life is not death, it's indifference. We will now begin. We will again be using battery-operated candles this year for the safety of our meeting house. And afterwards, I'll invite you to join me for a reception on the green, weather permitting, or in the parsonage if it's raining. So I hope you'll join us. It should be fun. We will now begin our morning worship. I light our green sanctuary and look for all the ways we strive to be a sustainable congregation. One way is by having a virtual service this morning and not heating our meeting house twice on the 24th. I also light the candles in our advent wreath. Our first, our first candle was for peace. 
our second was our, our candle for joy. Our third was for faith and hope. And today's candle is for love. And tonight, we light the candle for Christmas. Our opening words are The Secret by Janet Offrain. Whispers from my mouth to God's ear, to your heart, a promise of agape love, where old wounds heal. Cracks in the foundation of your soul are filled in the barren places. Where the hope was lost before the secret was revealed and fear died, leaving us to finally smell the roses that the lucky ones have been playing with so re recklessly. I invite you now to sing with me, Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire, number 34 in your great hymnal, Though I May Speak with Bravest Fire. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. To dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in freedom, to serve humanity in love is our covenant with each other and with God. Today I want to tell you a story called I Love You Forever, written by Robert Munch, illustrated by Sheila McGraw. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew and he grew until he was two years old and he ran all around the house and he pulled all the books off the shelves. And he pulled all of, the, all of the food out of the refrigerator and he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. But at night, when the two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room, crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed. And if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. 
So even when he makes a big mess, she loves him. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. The kind of love that is no matter what. The little boy, he grew and he grew. He grew and he grew until he was nine years old and he never wanted to come in for dinner and he wanted, he never wanted to take a bath. And when grandma visited, he always said bad words. Sometimes his mother wanted to sell him to the zoo. But at nighttime, when he was asleep, the mother quietly opened the door to the room and crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of the bed. And if he was really asleep, she picked up the nine-year-old boy, rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The boy grew. He grew and he grew and he grew and he grew and he was a teenager. And he sang, he had strange friends and he wore strange clothes and he listened to strange music. And sometimes the mother felt like she was in a zoo. But at night, when that teenager was asleep, the mother opened the door to the room, crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of the bed. And if he was really asleep, she picked him up. She picked up that great big boy and she rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. That teenager, he grew, he grew and he grew and he grew and he grew until he was grown up man. He left home and got a house across town, started a life of his own. But sometimes on dark nights, the mother got into her car and drove across town. If all the lights in her son's house were out, she opened his bedroom window, crawled across the floor and looked up over the side of his bed. If that great big man was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Well, that mother, she got older, and she got older and older. And one day she called up her son and said, you better come see me because I'm old and sick. So her son came to see her. And when he came in the door, she tried to sing and the song she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. But she couldn't finish because she was too old and sick. The son went to his mother. He picked her up and he rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he sang his, this song, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always, as long as I'm living, my mommy you'll be. When the sun came home that night, he stood for a long time at the top of the stairs. Then he went into his room where his very new baby daughter was sleeping and he picked her up in his arms and very slowly rocked her back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And while he rocked her, he sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. You might have a different tune to that song. Anyway, I just want you to think about that kind of love, that love that parents have for their children. I invite you into a time of prayer or meditation as is your practice. We begin by breathing in peace and breathing out love. <clears throat> Yeah.
is from the Hebrew scriptures, 2 Samuel. Go tell my servant David, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I took you from the pasture. I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name. I will appoint you a place for my people in Israel. The Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever.
Christmas Eve and the last Sunday in Advent, it makes sense to consider love. Our English language has just one word for love, which sometimes limits our understanding of the emotion of love and what of love of God. I don't talk much about God in this church primarily because I think that deciding that God is a part of your life is, a, is not a you, you mandate. I believe that God is love, which is very much like our scripture from 2 Samuel prescribes, as today in today's reading from the Christian church. The love of God is not something you need to reach out for or provide for, it's provided for you. Does that make sense? This love that is God is not something you need to work for or prepare for, not something you need to build a house for. It is love that is offered with no strings at all. The Greeks gifted us with six words for love, each carrying a unique resonance and significance. Eros being passion, and romantic love, philia, deep friendship, lotus, the playful kind of love, agape, the selfless, unconditional love, pragma, enduring love, philusia, the love of self. These words form a sort of kaleidoscope of emotions, painting a canvas of our connections with one another. The words from Jane Off Janet Aubrey in her work, The Secret, whisper truths from the, her heart to the divine, resonating through the chambers of our collective spirit. To your heart, a promise of agape love, where old wounds heal cracks in the foundation of your soul. Filled are the barren places where hope was lost before the secret was revealed and fear died. The promise of agape love is a love that knows no bounds, speaks directly to the core of our shared humanity. Authorine's words beckon us to contemplate the healing power embedded within the profound form of love, the one that mends wounds and fills the voids of our souls. What better promise could there be for this season than the healing, this healing kind of agape love? In, his, in this meditation preparing for Christmas, Richard Rohr guides us through the poignant dialogue between the prophet Nathan and the King David. In the exchange, we witness a divine reversal, a turning point that echoes the central theme of love of God and God as love throughout the Hebrew and Christian scriptures. In 2 Samuel, the Lord speaks to David, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I took you from the pasture. I've been with you wherever you've gone. I will make for you a great name. I will appoint a place for my people Israel. The Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. This passage embodies a profound shift challenging David's initial inclination to build a house for God. Instead, the divine is to build a lasting house for David and his kingdom. Reflecting on this scripture, we find a powerful metaphor for how to love, how the love of God works. How often do we, like David, try out of our fear and need to control or to construct a house for the divine ourselves? In 2 Samuel, the divine whispers, let me build a house for you. We may find an enduring peace in relinquishing control and allowing love to shape our lives instead of allowing fear to shape our lives. This is much easier to say than to do especially for me. So often I respond with the need to fix things and take control 
In other words, I respond with my fear instead of love. For instance, my sister texted me this week to say that she and her husband have COVID and may not be able to make it to my father's house for Christmas on the 29th. Immediately, I started thinking about how many people would be at my father's for Christmas and worrying if my sister and her husband wouldn't be, if they wouldn't be there, if maybe my family wouldn't want to go. I got into a fix-it mode about the dinner and he, I even called my father. He asked me what the text said and then, and only then, when I read it to him out loud, did I, did I realize that my sister said, I might not get to dad's house on the 29th. Then with my father counting, realized there would still be 18 other family members to visit with who, who do not have COVID. If I had responded to my sister's text with love instead of fear, I could have trusted that things would work out just as they must. As we contemplate the ancient Greek wisdom and the sacred readings, we discover a common thread, the transformative power of all different types of love. Agape love or unconditional love becomes the cornerstone of a life built on love because it heals, it fills, it reveals the secret that fear holds no power when love is embraced. In the spirit of Ludus, let us play with the ideas of, of love and how it surrounds us in every moment. Let us engage with, with love joyfully, allowing it to permeate every aspect of our lives. In the words of Richard Rohr, reflect, are you still trying to build the love that God is a how uh, build the love of God, or can you first let that love into your own heart that God has built for you? Let us open our hearts to transform the power of love, embracing the wisdom of the ancients and the sacred texts that guide us. Let the whisper of agape love resonate within us, filling the cracks in our foundations and preparing a lasting house for the divine within our own souls. Most of all, let this Christmas be the one where we find love at the center, the love that casts out all fear and makes us whole. I invite you to sing with me our final hymn, hymn number 239, Go Tell It on the Mountain.
surpasses all understanding, the faith and hope that sustains us, the joy that never dies, and the love that casts out all fear be with you now and evermore. Amen. Oh.